Uh, so it's, it's, the, it's the Columbia Cougars. That's, that's, the team, that's the school team name. Okay, that's pretty cool. So I'm uh, pretty, pretty excited to be here. Um, so yeah, Shannon, what, what Shannon didn't tell you guys is uh, I actually, she used to bully me uh, years, years ago. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, but, and so she felt bad and you know, she bought me a cup of coffee and so yeah, so it was cool. Yeah, we're all good, I, I washed it away. I forgot all about it. But yeah, so no, very excited to be here, guys. Uh, just want to kind of, you know, like Shannon was telling you guys, um, anyone here from Hamilton, like born, raised, no, right? Okay. So I was, uh, I was, yeah, I was not, I was born outside of Toronto, um, and I was raised here in Hamilton, lived here most of my life. Um, and for me, like a lot of you guys, everyone here plays sports, right? So I was a big, I was a big sports guy. My first uh, sport that I played was soccer. I love soccer. Then I got into basketball. I know I was talking to a few of basketball guys. Anyone else who basketball team? Who's the basketball? Okay. All right. Okay. Basketball coach. Okay. And player too. Player coach. Player coach. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And um, yeah. And so once I got to high school, I got involved in every sport. So I, I played basketball. I played volleyball. Co-ed badminton. Uh, touch football. Um, I can't swim, so I didn't play on the polo team. Um, yeah, sorry, sorry, guys. Um, what other sports? Any sport, basically, like that I could try, I would do. We didn't have a track team. I would have did that if we, if I could. Um, and so, while I was in school, you know, like I, I started, I got, I got introduced to football by a couple buddies of mine, and and uh, they were like, they're like, man, you're so fast, and I think you, I think you'd be a good running back. And I don't know if you guys are very familiar with. Uh, football. Everybody here know the positions? Okay, so the running back, he basically, he gets the ball and he like runs. He basically runs through the, you know, between the guys and down the field. And so I, when I got onto the field, I was like, there was a bunch of guys, I was like 120 pounds in grade 10. And these guys were like huge, like, <clears throat> like 200 pounds, linebackers and stuff. And uh, the first, the first run that I took, I got hit by this guy's name, Steve Francis, and never forget this, and he like crushed me. And he stood over top of me, and he was like, welcome to Hill Park football. And I was like, oh my gosh, I think I want to quit. I don't think I, <laughs> I, don't think I can handle this. And, uh, and then one of my coaches, he gave me this advice. He was like, listen, when in doubt, you bounce it out. And so I took the ball, and like every time I get the ball, I just like run to the sideline, and they're like, man, he has great vision. But I was running scared, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I was running scared. I didn't wanna get hit by Steve Francis or any of those guys ever again. And, um, and so as I progressed through high school, I, uh, I played uh, a, different, a few other positions. I got into wide receiver. So the wide receiver is the guy that catches the ball from the quarterback. And then I also played defensive back. And that is the guy that covers the wide receiver. He stops him from, um, from catching the ball. And so, um, as I started playing, I, got, I started to like, fall more in love with playing defense. Uh, one reason is because my older brother, uh, he played defensive back as well. He played 11 seasons uh, professionally. And so he was not only my big brother, but he was my mentor, right? And I'm gonna get a little, a little bit into that later on. But, um, but yeah, he was the guy that I always like, got advice from and like, always kinda uh, would just yeah, ask him and get a little bit of tips and training advice and things like that. And so he was the guy that I, that I really looked up to. And so he played uh, in Winnipeg, started his career in BC, um, then he went to Montreal, and then he finished his career in, uh, in Winnipeg. And he also had a stint uh, with the New Orleans Saints. Anybody familiar with the New Orleans Saints? No? Okay, that's an NFL team. Um, so anyway, um, so, he was, so he was like a big inspiration for me. And so while I was in, in, in high school and kind of progressing, um, I was like, you know what, I think I can take this to the next level. I think I want to go to university and play university sports. Anybody have aspirations to go to college and, and university and play sports there maybe? Okay, okay, good. So, so that was me, that was, that was just like you guys and I, that's what I wanted to do. And I had a few of my teammates, they were like, Buck, are you serious? They, I won't call me Buck, my last name is Buckner. So he's like, Buck, are you serious? He's like you're skinny, you're like, you're not, you're okay speed. Like, I don't know if you're gonna make it to, uh, you know, at the university level. So, um, so I had a guy, you know, a, a guy that I used to train with all the time tell me that I couldn't do something. And I don't know if you guys are like me, but I'm kind of stubborn and I hate when people tell me I can't do something. Anyone can relate? Anyone can relate to that? I cannot stand when people tell me I can't do something. So I'm like, you know what? Not only am I going to show myself, but I'm going to show you that not only can I get to university, because one thing as well that I'll share with you guys, my grades weren't always the best. 
And so I had to go to night school and had to go to summer school to get my grades up so I could uh, get eligible to go to university. And so, uh, so I got to university, or I applied first, and um, there were a bunch of schools that I got accepted to, and I finally made my decision and I went to the University of Windsor. Anybody planning on going to Windsor? There was a teacher that was telling me he was talking to you guys about Windsor, so. Great school, I'm not recruiting you guys to go there, but, uh, but I, de I decided to go to Windsor, and I studied sociology there, I had a minor in psych, and, um, and yeah, so I, I kind of overcame that one hurdle of you know, someone telling me that I couldn't do something. And so when I got to university, you know, there were, of course, there were other, a few other challenges there. Um, you know, one, again, like I told you guys earlier, my grades weren't the best, so I had to improve my study habits. And, um, and I managed, to, uh, my first semester, actually, um, I was on academic probation and ended up getting off academic probation after my, fir my first semester and, um, and overcame that. And while I was in university, again, I, I started, I was playing defensive back, like I told you guys, and I was having a pretty good career. So from 2006, I was there till 2010, and had a good career, and as I was there, I was like, you know what? I think I wanna take this to the next level, which is professional. So there's, you know, you, have, you play in high school, then there's, you know, then there's your collegiate or university level, and I'm like, you know what? I, I'm feeling pretty confident. I, I wanna go and take it to the next level. So, you know, during that entire time, while through high school, all through university, I was still consulting with my older brother. He was, he's like my best friend. I talk to him about everything, even to this day, like, you know, uh, I have a girlfriend, so you know, I get you know, some relationship advice from him because he has some kids and he's married, and I get like financial advice, I get all these different things from him. So, um, so I told him, like, listen, I want to play pro. He's like, listen, then you got to prepare, you got to get ready to go to a combine. Are you guys familiar with a combine? You guys know what that is? So a combine, basically what that is, is it's, uh, you get tested, so you go and you like, it's evaluation, so there's a bunch of uh, professional teams, so in, this, or in the CFL at the time, there was eight teams, so you have eight different teams that are gonna evaluate the top talent all through the country. Even in the US, they'll bring some guys in, some Canadians that are playing in the US. And so I had to you know, prepare myself for this combine. And so at the combine, what you do, is you do a bench press. You guys work out, everyone know, familiar with the bench press? Okay, so you have to do a bench press, 225 pounds, as many times as you can. You do a 40 yard dash. You do uh, an agility test, so it's called the, uh, a 20 yard shuttle, so you kind of stand in one spot, you run and touch the line, run back, touch the other line. Um, what else? Uh, a standing broad jump, so as far as you can, you, you try to jump. Um, you also do some positional drills, and so I had to get ready for this combine. And that was in 2010. So, uh, so I'm getting ready, I'm like preparing, I'm getting like pretty much the best shape of my life up until that point. And uh, in, I believe it was, uh, it was May of that year, I had, uh, I went to the combine. And so I got, I get there and I'm feeling all confident, maybe a little overconfident. And all the teams are there, I do, I, go, I do the bench press, I think I did like 14 reps or something, or maybe, no, it was not that many that year. I did, I did 11 reps. It was 11 that year. I did 11 reps and then I ran a, like a 4.640, so 4.6 seconds. I ran the 40 yard dash. Uh, I don't remember my broad jump. But anyway, so uh, my agent, I had an agent at the time and he told me, he's like, he's like, you know what? I don't think you're going to get drafted uh, or drafted early, but when the draft comes, expect your name to be called in the later rounds because there's six rounds, okay? And so I'm, you know, the, the, I do go through the test, have a few scouts talk to me, and then the draft comes, which was in May of that year, 2010. And so the first round passes, and I didn't hear my name called. I'm like, okay, expected. That's what my agent told me. There were six rounds. Second round passed, my name wasn't called. Third round is passed, my name wasn't called. Fourth round, okay, I'm starting to get a little nervous. How come my name hasn't been called yet? Fifth round passes, nothing. Sixth round, uh, and also I was checking these things online. So the first two rounds were on TV, and then the last, the other rounds are online. So I'm like hitting the refresh button like every three seconds, trying to, uh, trying to get, see if my name's coming up, and nothing. So I'm like, man, now what? And so uh, my agent, he was like, he's like, listen, he's like, you might get a call. Uh, there's, you know, there's always teams that sign guys afterwards. So I kind of waited around a week, a month, two months, nothing. And so I also had another year of eligibility left and I kind of wanted to take a few extra courses. So I ended up going back to Windsor and in that 2010 year and I did another year of football. 
And so I finished that year, took some extra courses, upgraded, and then I went back to the combine. So this is now 2011, I go back to the combine. And in 2011, I uh, do this exact same test, so bench press, I improved my bench press that year, I think I did like two extra reps. I improved my 40 by a few tenths of a second. Um, I did a little bit better in the positional drill, so I'm like, yo, for sure, for sure, a team is going to pick me up. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get signed by somebody. And uh, lo and behold, um, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, they gave me, they didn't give me a contract, but they gave me an offer. And the offer was uh, that I would go to their mini camp, which is a three-day camp at the, in like April, I think it was, and um, I just have to, you know, perform and compete against a few other guys. So I go to this camp, this mini camp, and I'm there, and I'm, you know, going through all my positional drills, uh, doing everything that, you know, that I've been doing for the past how many years now, and, um, and I, at the end, I didn't get, I didn't get signed, so they ended up taking two other Canadians over top of me, which is a little disappointing at that point because I like I got so close, right, and I got turned away. And during these times, even the uh, the first time when I got cut or not cut, but when I didn't get invited back to to a team, one thing that I made sure I did was figure out what I had to do to get better, right? So it's like okay, so I know I didn't get this this opportunity to to play professional this year, this year. But what do I have to do to give myself a better chance the following year? So I went back and you know I worked out and I trained and I got got around like other great players and try to improve my game. And then again, like I told you, 2011, I didn't get signed. And when I went home, I came back to Hamilton that year or that summer, and uh, and I went through like a bit of a like I don't like using the word, but it was like almost like a depression kind of. Right, so like I wasn't training, it was like almost like two months where I wasn't training, I wasn't, I wasn't, um, you know, I wasn't like hanging out with my friends, I was just like super like down on myself. I don't know, you don't have to put up your hand, but, but I was like really low on myself like about like, you know, my confidence and my confidence was down for a little bit and I'm like, man, like, you know, this is something that I worked so hard for and I, and I didn't get it, so I was disappointed. And, um, and during that, during that time, like, my, uh, my mom, she gave me a book. She gave me a book to read. Uh, it was called, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it's called The Secret. And uh, in that book, there was just like a lot of, there was like a lot of, um, like a lot of inspirational like quotes and messages that I, that I took from it, right? And so during that time, I was just, you know, I'm, I'm a student of, you know, football, but I'm also a student of life too. And so, I, you know, I was like kind of like highlighting stuff and I was writing things down, things that kind of like stuck to me and it hit me. And I'm like, okay. And I was starting to get energy every single day. Like I was kind of just getting more and more and more energy and kind of, and I got back into training after a little bit and I uh, started personal training. I was kind of like working with other people and staying in that mode. And, um, and I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm not gonna give up. I'm not gonna give up. Because even at that point, after I got cut the second time and turned away the second time from trying to become a professional, there were a lot of other people that told me, you know what, Matt, you should give up. You know, it's, this is, you know, you've already tried twice. You're getting a little bit older you know, maybe you should go and get a job. And I'm like, you know, this is my dream. I want to be a professional athlete. This is like, in my middle school yearbook, I wrote that I was going to go to the NBA, right? I didn't go to the NBA, but like, the point is I wanted, to, I've always wanted to be a professional athlete. And so I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this one more time and I'm going to give it everything I have. And even though I was giving it everything I had before, I'm going to give it a little bit more this year. And, uh, I went back that year, that 2011 year, and I was training like a madman. Like every time if anyone saw me, I was in the gym or I was on the field or I was just working on my craft. I'm watching game film. I'm watching my own film. I'm just like working, looking to see how I can improve. How, how can I get better? And, um, and I just became like super obsessed with it. And um, I also kind of did some crazy things too. Like I wasn't on the Hamilton Tiger Cats, but that year, there, that off season in 2011, or going into 2012, but I was training on their facilities. Like I was at, you guys are familiar with Iverwind Stadium? Well, the, yeah, the, so I was training, it's called Tim Hortons Field now, but at the time it was called the Iverwind Stadium, and I would go there, because I knew a couple guys on the team, and I would just train with them. And like there was a scout that was there, and he'd like see me, and he's like, he's not on the team, what's he? What's he doing here? Right, and one of my buddies was like, oh, you know, he, we went to university together, he's just gonna train with us for a little bit. And he's like, okay, and they let it happen. 
And then I went to the combine again for the third time now. So I go to the same combine, same bench press, same 40 yard dash, same broad jump, same shuttles, pretty much the same scouts. Like they're looking at me like, this guy, he's here again? Like, what's, what's he doing here? But, uh, but yeah, I went at it again, and that year I ended up uh, making, or not making the team, but I got an offer to go to a private workout with the Hamilton Ticats after my third try. And, um, and I was, like, that was a real proud moment for me because one, I get to you know, almost play for my hometown team. And uh, so I went to mini camp, or their private workout, I mean, and, uh, and not to like brag, but I killed it. Like, I like, was on fire at this, this, this uh, private workout. And, uh, and then after that, I um, ended up uh, going to training camp. And at the training camp, even when they gave me the, the offer to go to training camp, they told me, they're like, you know what, you're gonna be a practice roster guy. You know, we have two other guys that are ahead of you. And you know, we really like these other guys. And I'm like, you know what, I just want the opportunity. So, and that's what I did. I just took the opportunity. And when I got to training camp, there were a few guys that were ahead of me. The first day of training camp that year, this, this is in 2012, the first day of training camp, one guy pulls his hamstring. The second day of training camp, the other guy pulls his hamstring. So right after going into the third day of training camp now, I'm number one on the depth chart, right? And so I don't know if you, anybody here has been a backup or whatever, but you never know when your opportunity is gonna come. So you always have to prepare for it, right? And, and so I, that's, and I was ready. When, I, when my number was called, I was ready. And so I was getting first team reps. And then that year I ended up starting like, I made the team, and then I started like 14 games, 14 or 15 games that year, and um, and yeah, so it went from you know being a practice roster guy to starting, right? And all of that, like, and the reason I'm so proud of uh, of that process is because I one I didn't give up, you know, in 2000. And, 10 or 2011 when I first got cut, I could have just packed it in and said, you know what, that's it for me, right? 2011 came, I could have packed it in again. Okay, I've tried twice. And then even in 2012 when I did get the offer, I could have been discouraged, you know what, uh, I'm third on the depth chart, maybe I'm, I'm not gonna make the team, what are my chances? But the thing is guys, if you, if you give up on yourself, you, you don't know what you can accomplish. You never know, right? And, and if you don't also, if you have a goal and you have something that you wanna achieve, and you're, not, and you're not preparing for it, and you're not preparing for it, when that opportunity comes, you know, you won't get, quote unquote, lucky, right? So uh, there's a, a, a quote, I love quotes, and there's a quote that I heard, and it says, luck is when your preparation meets your opportunity. So the only way, the only way you're gonna be successful is if you prepare, right? So everybody here has a goal, right? Hands up, who has a goal? Okay, all right. So. A few things, a few things that worked for me, again, you don't have to do these things, but these are the things that worked for me, is I wrote my goals down. I wrote every single goal down. And like, I'm talking like, what my jersey number was gonna be, what my like, like just like crazy things, like how many interceptions was I gonna have, how many, how many, how much money did I wanna make, like all these different things, I just wrote it down, right? I wanted to be an all-star, I didn't, I didn't get that yet. I haven't been an all-star yet, but that's, that's my goal. And I write it down every single year. I write it in, I have this uh, notebook, and I go to training camp, and I write all my, I write my training camp goals out, I write my, um, my season goals out, I write my daily goals out, and I review them all the time, right? And another thing that I wanna let you guys know is, along the way, along the way you guys have these goals, tell one person. You, may, you, you can put it on Facebook or whatever you want to do. You guys have Facebook, right? Or maybe you're not using that. Am I, I would, what are you guys using? Everything. Snapchat. Put it on Snapchat. Put your goal on Snapchat if you want. If you want, right? And share it. Share it with, maybe it doesn't have to be a group, but share it with somebody. Share your goal with somebody because what that does is it keeps you accountable. And it's so now, like, so my, the person I would share my goals with was my brother, right? And I was very fortunate to have him because you know, he, he went through it before me, right? He's about 14, yeah, he's 14 years older than me. And so he went through, he's gone through a lot. He's gone through a decade and a half of life, right? And so I had him and, and, and I would ask him and so I would tell him all my goals, right? And not all of them, but most of them. And so share it with somebody because it's gonna keep you accountable. And then on top of that, um, as, you're, as you're hitting these goals, right, or as you're, um, trying to get, trying to hit, hit your goal, you're gonna get to a point where 
I almost guarantee you're gonna get to a point where you're gonna hit a rough patch, right? You're gonna hit a roadblock. As, you don't have to put up your hand. Maybe you're at that roadblock right now. I don't know, right? At that point, it's gonna, that's gonna be your test. That's gonna be your test. And it's gonna be either you're going to give up, which is, which is fine, like it's okay. If, they, if you have something else that you wanna pursue, that's fine as well. But during that moment, during that moment, ask yourself, how bad, how bad do I want this goal? How bad do I want this goal? For me, I want it to be a pro so bad, so bad. And so in order to get that, right, I had to be honest with myself too. Because I might not have been, you know, in that 2010 year, I might not have been as focused as I thought I was. Or I might not have been sacrificing the things that I thought I, thought I was sacrificing. You know, like maybe time on Instagram. Maybe time on my cell phone. Maybe I was spending too much time on my phone. Maybe I was spending too much time on the internet looking at things and not focusing on what I really needed to focus on. And so there's little things that you guys, you guys are gonna have to give up in order to, to get that goal. Um, and, I, and I have to stress again, like how important it is to have, a, like I said, to tell somebody your goal, but you have someone that you can, uh, that can mentor you, right? So, um, so I was fortunate enough that I had my brother, but a lot of you guys, if you say you wanna be, maybe you don't wanna be a pro athlete, maybe you wanna be a dentist, right? Your teachers here, they can give you the blueprint and we can kinda of give you the blueprint on how to be a dentist, but in order to really, to really know, you gotta to talk to a dentist. You gotta get in that office and ask them, what classes do I need to take? What are my paths that I need to, what, what do I need to accomplish to get to where you're at? And maybe you need to just go out for coffee with them once a week, twice a week, or whatever. Or send them an email, whatever, whatever it is. You have, to, you have to get in that environment. You have to submerge yourself in that environment. And that's what I did, and that's how I got to where I'm at. And even moving forward, there's other things that I want to do. And in order to, to get there, I can't, I can't do it alone. You can't have success by yourself. I know some of you think you know it all. I know that's what I thought I, when I was 15, 16, 17. I thought I knew everything. I thought I knew everything. And I thought I could get things done by myself. And even now, like my brother would be like, man, I told you, you should have listened to me that, that day or you'd be further ahead. But just find, find, a, find a mentor. Find somebody that's in your group or in, in that profession that you're trying to, that you're trying to get to. Um, and yeah, so I, I just wanted to share a little bit of my, of, of my story. And so, guys, don't, don't give up on, on, on your goals. Don't, like, that's, that's what I want to leave with you guys. Don't give up on your goals. If you, if you can, if you dream it, you can achieve it. And, I, and for me, I'm a big dreamer. I'm a big dreamer. And, and there's so many, so many other people that I want to reach out to and help, but Along, along that way, along that way, I'm going to continue to dream, I'm, and I'm going to, I'm going to achieve so many other goals. And I want you guys to do the same thing. And yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to leave with you guys. So I hope, uh, I hope you got a little bit of something out of that. Um, and if you guys have any questions, I'll be more than willing to answer them. Woo!